As you might imagine, we get called in all the time to look at home theaters that people feel like they installed or someone installed for them, and they're just not what they expected. And because of that, we've put together our top seven home theater mistakes to help make sure when you're building your theater, you avoid these. The number one home theater mistake we see is the wrong screen size. Most of the time, it's because the screen is too small for the room in the seating position. Sometimes, although a lot less often, it's too big and the seating position is too close and people can get vertigo because it's just done wrong. If you want to nail the screen size or you're trying to figure out Go over to audioadvice.com. We actually have a free home theater design tool that will allow you to put where your seats are going to be, the size of your room, and it will help you figure out exactly what the right screen size is for your situation. Number two home theater mistake, wrong paint color. We go into a room, there's a great projector, a great screen, and you've got basically white or light colored walls that are bouncing all the light around the room and it just doesn't look good. Make sure when you're planning out the color of your room, ideally you want darker colors. There's a reason when you go into a movie theater that it's dark. The picture looks a lot better when you don't have white walls bouncing everything around. Also, when you're choosing the paint color, think you want a matte or flat color so we're not getting gloss reflections or anything else like that around the room. Also, think about furniture that's around it. Sometimes we'll walk into a room and we'll see this great television and we've got great sound, but there might be this furniture right below the screen that's gloss and reflecting light straight back onto it. Number three is bad sight lines. Sight lines are the lines when you're sitting in your chair and you're looking at the screen itself. You can mess this up in a couple of ways. One is if you don't have high enough risers and you're basically looking into the back of someone's head. So you really need to think about the design of the room. If you've got one, two, maybe three rows of seats, how high the screen should be, how high the riser should be. If you go over to audioadvice.com, our free home theater design tool will actually make sure all of your sight lines are perfect and you don't have an issue. Number four is spending too much money on video. When you think about your budget, what happens is people will go in and say, okay, I want the biggest screen I can get or the best projector and the sound is anemic. And what you'll find when you go into a theater and it just immerses you in the emotion, it's because they found that balance of great video and great sound. When you cut the sound out and you put everything into video and the cables aren't good and the components aren't good and the speakers are tiny, you just don't get that great experience you're looking for. If you're trying to figure out how much money to spend in the various portions of a home theater, you're designing one now, go over to audiovice.com. We actually have a great video and whole article on how we recommend people allocate budget between cables and video and audio and everything else to get that right optimal theater. Number five is not enough power. So what happens is you go to design your theater room, maybe you're just grabbing off of an electrical outlet that's being used for a bunch of other things in the room, and your amplifiers just either one, you know, blow a circuit or they actually blow their own fuses, or you just can't get that deep bass because you don't have enough amps for what you're running in the room. So in some cases, you need to actually pull a dedicated circuit for the room itself it would give you that power to get the punch and the video and the audio and everything you want. Number six is not calibrating the system. Again, sometimes we'll be brought into a home and they're ready to upgrade the theater. They've heard about audio advice or they're calling us for um, advice. And we realize whoever installed the system, they just plugged all the components up, but they really were not audio and video experts. Consequently, they never calibrated the system. Pretty much every decent receiver or processor today has some auto calibration on it. And you can run that calibration yourself or whoever's installing it. If they're audio experts or theater experts, they can guide you on running it and actually tweaking it, really getting it right. In fact, for all the top processors and receivers, Audio Advice sends our tips and tricks guides on how to do these calibrations 
to our customers. Obviously, if we're doing it ourselves, we do it. If someone's buying from us and they're do it yourself, or we will send it to them and really make sure you get the calibration right. And I'm telling you, from an audio perspective, when you hear a system that's been calibrated and it's really taken out all the modes and nodes and the bass and everything else, it just sounds totally different. And the experience is so much better. This is also true in video. Uh, you'll see on our site, we've got a couple uh, videos and reviews and buyer's guides on how to do these kinds of calibrations. On video in particular, we'll find that people know how to calibrate it to get it matched up, for instance, a projector onto a screen, but they're not going back and doing panel alignment and the colors and all the things you need to do to really get that great pop. Another part of calibration is making sure that you're getting the best sound that you can. Sometimes we'll go in and we'll actually see the surround sound settings set to not get the best sound. What we typically advise people is you either want to set to bitstream or in most receivers and processors, it gives you the ability to choose what the default decoding is for multi-channel and also for two-channel. For most people, setting to Dolby Atmos for your multi-channel and actually setting to Dolby for two-channel is the best outcome. Now let's talk about the two-channel just for a second because the multi-channel, most people get it. I want to get that great uh, Dolby Atmos sound or DTS if it comes in. But in two-channel, most people enjoy where it's taking the dialogue and putting it into the center channel and it can take a stereo feed, whether it's listening to music or watching a television show, and actually make it really quite impressive in the theater. Some audiophiles prefer to set the two channel to just stereo, which is fine as well. Number seven of the top mistakes that we see is not getting the acoustics right in the room. And what I mean by this is not the settings and calibration that we just talked about, but the actual acoustics of the room itself. So when you're designing a room, if you've cut a lot of hard flat walls or it's cube-like, you don't have carpet, you're gonna have a very harsh sounding room. There's some easy things you can do to make that room sound better. Using carpet, soft textures, maybe bookshelves in the back of a room, or if it's a true theater room, you know, the kind of furniture that you use in it. But doing acoustic panels is one of the easiest things to do. It's not that expensive and can really soften up a room to make it sound great. If you've got questions on how to do that, we actually have an article on how to think about the acoustics and set up the acoustics in a room at audioadvice.com. I hope these seven mistakes will keep you from making the same mistake when you build your dream theater. If you've got questions about anything home theater related or audio related, jump over to audioadvice.com. You'll find we've got people on chat and on the phone that are happy to help you out. Plus, we have a full home theater design tool there that will help you figure out where your seat should go, how big your screen should be, and avoiding a lot of these mistakes. Plus, a whole list of buyer's guides that go into details on avoiding all these mistakes and the things you should do to get your home theater right. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe. Thanks for watching.